What's up everybody? It's Henry again with the PSI Defense Channel coming to you with another video. I just recently got my FSC back from um, First Strike as I told you guys before. I had to send this in because I was having some issues, some malfunctions. Uh, you can see the malfunctions I'm talking about on another video and um, I'll link the description below in case you're uh, getting similar uh, malfunctions. But um, First Strike has some amazing customer service. Um, I emailed them a few times. I They sent me a uh, FedEx label, so I didn't have to pay a dime to ship it out to them. It got to them fast. Uh, they had it maybe about two weeks. Then they shipped it right back to me. Um, yeah, and then told me what was going on with the marker and what they did to solve the problem. So um, what ended up happening is I had adjusted the velocity screw too tightly and what it did there's a spring inside the regulator it's a very heavy duty spring very strong stiff spring um, and I guess when you if you bottom it out it won't recover fully so um, that was causing the problem it had been uh, uh, pinched or, or binded it got binded and um, basically that was the problem so they did a full cleaning, they replaced that spring, and now it works flawlessly. So uh, word to the wise, don't bottom out your regulators. Definitely get a chronograph and adjust your velocity slowly and carefully. Um, once you get in this re in this configuration, you know, I've got the Lapco 5.12 inch uh, .686 barrel. With this or with the stock barrel, um, you're not going to get too many, too much more than 300 FPS out of this. But the good news is that you'll be getting 27 to 30 some odd joules, which is plenty to stop somebody in their tracks, especially in such a compact uh, form factor. So um, the ways that you're going to go beyond. 300 and 315 320 um, as it sits right here is you're going to need a longer barrel possibly ASA um, I only use T8.1 magazines the, uh, the the stock FSC magazines they only hold six rounds and you have to use eight gram CO2s which are a little harder to come by a little more expensive uh, less air so with T8.1 T8.9 mags uh, you can actually put a 12 gram CO2 you get eight full shots um, they sell all kinds of slip covers this is an instinct industry slip cover let's see if I can I think it's on one of my mags uh, Sterling self-defense he sells a slip cover that actually has a notch where you can manually release the follower this one automatically releases when you pop it in which I kind of like, but at the same time, sometimes it doesn't engage. But this is what it looks like when you've got a T8.1 magazine in it. It really doesn't affect it too badly. Um, as you can see, I've got a Hogue grip sleeve. This is the full-size Hogue handall grip sleeve. Um, there's a lot of people who use a lot of different grip sleeves. This one is my favorite because you have amazing texture there's these bumps on on the sides which fit into your palm and just makes your gun feel amazing in the hand makes your marker feel great so hogue full size hand all is what i roll with um, and today what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you guys how to replace uh your o-ring there's a mil sig heat core o-ring from grimberg less lethal that i like to use in all of my first strike Tiberius markers um, and what that does the heat core as I showed you in previous videos is where your marker stores the power um, and then fires your firing bolt in order to shoot your projectiles well uh, the weak point in these markers especially when you go beyond high power you know beyond uh, factory settings of um, velocity the weak point is in the o-ring that holds that pressure in until it's fired and that's where they tend to leak when you put them in high power 
if you use a mil sig version you see it's kind of flat rounded very durable a lot stronger than the factory o-ring then um, doesn't increase the power but as you increase the power it makes your marker more stable and less likely less prone to failures so um, a lot of people they'll leave their stock o-ring in there because it, it will last a little while but it will eventually go after you shoot it uh, with high power with um, heavier less lethal projectiles um, at 30 plus joules you're going to eventually lose that o-ring so what i like to do uh, as soon as i get them i just swap that o-ring out and it's not too difficult as you'll see with your uh, fsc uh, they've made disassembly a lot easier than in the T8.1 because of the trigger mechanism, how it's all housed in one. So, without further ado, let's get into it. As you see, we've got a couple Allen keys. These are the only two that you really need to disassemble your FSC. Sorry, I don't know the exact size, but it's the one that goes into the relief valve. And then the one that's smaller than that. So we're gonna you remove your magazine, of course. Then you're gonna pull your barrel out, set that to the side, put your bolt spring, and what the smaller Allen key does takes these two these two screws. Boy, they've got these. And they're really good. Like I said, this just came from first strike. The only thing I've done since I've had it back was uh, shot some of Daniel Sterling's um, prototype uh, self-defense rounds. This is more like a first strike round with a steel ball and it's 10 grams shaped projectile. Um, I didn't get a single jam with my FSC, although my HP-68s did jam. That's why I shoot jewels with these puppies. But uh, these seem to be pretty great preliminary testing would uh, imply that he's onto something. So, all right, the screw right here, uh, right at the end of your trigger guard. There's two of them, one on each side. Okay. And I've got my first strike ointment and my gun drops here in case I need to clean and relube anything. I've got my cloth here to wipe stuff down, but um, like I said, it just came back from first strike, so I really would be surprised if there's a lot that I need to do inside of this guy. So, all right, take your bigger Allen key. I'm going to remove the front one first. Now, I'm not sure, yeah, like with the T8.1, that screw hole does protrude into the barrel chamber, so... With tightening this front one, I would be cautious, just so you don't run into any issues right there. Same with the T8.1. This back screw also goes through the regulator, helps hold your regulator down. All right. And that's essentially it. You don't have a trigger pin or anything. They've, they've changed the trigger mechanism so that you have to, um, so it's all connected and you don't have that spring and it's just really not the big headache and hassle as a T8.1 of getting it in and out. It's all pretty well self-contained. Take a look, it's the first time I've had it open since I've had it back, but everything looks really clean so far. All right, and FYI, <clears throat> last video I did uh, we did the Index Mag release from Instinct Industries. It's a very similar setup here. The FSC, the only difference is there's more of a pronounced hole there where your spring goes. I think this one's a little easier to pop out. Um, I didn't do a mag release, but I did put an aluminum mag release here in both of my FSCs um, so that they, uh, I hear the plastic ones go out, so I just replaced them with these aluminum pieces. I will eventually be putting Instinct Industries um, index releases because those are just awesome. So I don't need this for the heat core O-ring. But what you do need to do 
Oh, yeah. I'm going to take out this O-ring. Remove the arm from the trigger. Don't necessarily need to take this off, but I will snug these up. while I'm in here. Okay, now I'm just gonna remove the regulator. And remember your regulator screw has a locking washer on there. So you want to make sure you keep that. Don't lose that locking washer. Set that there and your regulator will come right off. And I always Check all the mechanics of your trigger mechanism. Make sure everything is moving freely. In particular, this is one of the parts that can get stuck. This thing, thing can get stuck there and then not go back into place. And you can run into a lot of issues, but. I'm gonna put some gun drops on this because I like to keep mine a little wetter than this. And I'm gonna work that, lift that work down into it. I don't know if you guys can see how thick these gun drops are, but I love them. Just put a little bit on everywhere. There's some moving parts. And then put a little bit on the O-rings. All right. And I'm going to move it around, let it work down in there. All right. Okay, then I'm going to set that aside. All righty. You're going to get your largest Allen key. You're going to take the upper. Remove that back plate. All right. And expose your heat core. You stick your index finger in there, push down. It will pop right out. Boom. Boy, that's really tight. Oh, wow. I don't know if they put a new o-ring but that looks kind of strange I know I did replace it with a factory o-ring but oh that one wasn't seated too well yeah in my uh, email correspondence with first strike I told him that I had put a heat core o-ring and he you know said some kind of jazz about how you know that's not a factory unit yada 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 Maybe that's your problem. I knew that it wasn't the issue, which in their investigation, they found out it wasn't as well. Um, but for, you know, for the sake of eliminating that, um, when I sent it in for service, I went in, head back in here and replaced it with a stock O-ring. But, um, okay, heat core, firing bolt. All right, yeah. It's moving pretty smooth. So let me show you guys something. This is like a bumper washer that when your firing bolt goes back into position, it doesn't smack your heat core too hard. One thing I found out, okay, there's like two ways that this seats. It, like if you put it on backwards, you'll notice that it kind of pops up like that. That's not what you want. You want to put it on to where once you seat it, it's flush with your heat core. All right. So you just want to make sure you do that. I'm going to visually inspect my O-rings. See if there's any dirt or anything in here that would be concerning. So make sure this is smooth. If you see any really bad scuffs that actually dig into the aluminum there. Might be an issue you want to address, but all looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my pick, maybe I'll take this hook pick, and then just wanna get in here. I 
and remove the heat core o-ring so i'm glad i got this set because i'll go around from different picks to try to see the best one okay got it and this is the factory heat core o-ring as you can see it's clear it's very rounded and with most of these ziploc bags that you get a lot of this stuff on you get these little rip tabs but i don't ever rip them open because they're just a mess after you do that like your grimberg uh, jewel bags and all kinds of other stuff they'll just pop open so grab one of your heat core o-rings from Grimberg and let's show you the difference you see that this one is more angular which means there's a lot more material it's a lot thicker this is actually designed to fully seat in the channel inside here because inside there it's machined it's not round it's shaped just like this so this goes directly in there and seats perfectly and then instead of a round surface you actually have this big flat surface that your firing bolt pin just slides in and out of so for to me it's a superior seal it's a more durable seal it's going to last a lot longer so that's why i go for these okay so let's see what i should have got okay i forgot something hold on just a second guys Okay, what I grabbed was a trusty crescent wrench. And the reason being is the heat core has these two little flat ends that you don't want to really put pliers on because it'll bite it. The, you know, it's aluminum, so it's very soft. And that'll tighten down on there, hold it securely, and not damage your heat core. So, what I'm going to do is remove this cap. So I'll show you how this helps replacing the heat core o-ring because it's a little, little tricky. All right, and there's an o-ring in there. You definitely want to inspect that one because I have found that that one is prone to getting mashed and it holds the majority of the pressure. This is the heat core here holds the majority of the pressure for your marker so that o-ring's got to be good okay so what I'm gonna do what I used to do I used to lube these first and then put them in which made it a hot slippery mess so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Allen key and I'm gonna butt that up right here on the very bottom of that channel let's see if you can see that yeah okay see there's my allen key it's going to be like in the essence a stopper because when you put that in it's going to want to go all the way in sometimes it's just a little wrestling match and this can help all right so what i'm going to do i'm going to kind of smash it like that and then try to work the first end into that channel There we go. And then push the push the rest in there. All right. And you get two good sides in there. That's all you really need because as you see that that kind of fell down in there, but you can use this Allen key to kind of work it back in there. I'm going to do this to hold that in there so I don't lose this part. While I go and seat the rest of this. Use my handy pick. Just be sure to be careful with your O-ring. You don't want to jab that up. See how that went in? Alright, so we got it seated. You want to just, I take the outside round edge 
and just run around it a couple times make sure it's really good and seated okay I'm gonna take my heat core back cap I'm gonna lube this up a little bit they've already put some lube but I'm gonna put some more you don't want to leave it a hot greasy mess but these things will dry out over time make sure you're not cross threading anything Tighten that back down. Remember, you're holding all the pressure with that pad, buddy. Mm hmm. All right, I'm going to put some grease or some uh, gun drops on these O rings here. I'm gonna go grab a q-tip okay remember we put this o-ring in dry because it made it exponentially easier for me to get that in but it makes it that much more important that you get this thing really good and lubed and then what the q-tip is for I want to push as much as that lubrication down into the channel that the o-ring sits in so that it's lubed on the sides it can seep in there because even though this is a mighty Grimberg Milsig o-ring you still want it as conditioned as possible so it doesn't dry out put several more drops in there use the tip to just kind of run it around the o-ring Get it down in the walls a little bit. Okay. And this is where my laceration ointment comes into play because any metal to metal, as I said before, I use the heavier stuff. I just want to smear some of this on here. Make sure it's not too tough to come in and out of there, but that you do have a really good seal. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of this laceration on one of the outside of the bolt. This actually goes into your barrel, and into your breech rather. And this is actually goes, in, let me show you. Goes into your barrel, shoot your projectile, and I don't know, I guess uh, when I lube it, I get the idea that puts a little grease on my detents, makes everything a lot smoother. So that's why I do that. All right. Okay. All right, so now grab your FSC upper. Remember the hole that gets the air goes there. So I'm gonna line up my hole on my heat core O-ring. You're gonna feel these O-rings go past two seats. So it's gonna be like a click. And I don't probably ever push that in too far because I let this back piece do most of the pushing for me. See, I can see through this hole, I can see part of the O-ring, so it actually, it's actually going to go in a little more, but when you let this back plate seat it, it seats perfectly. Yep. Now I don't see any O-rings in that hole. Yeah, this, this piece doesn't have to be super tight, but you want to snug it really good. And then, as always, with any of your first strike markers, you have to push the firing bolt forward before you reinstall the regulator. Okay, make sure these two O-rings don't fall out. There's a dowel pin here, dowel pin here, 
and then this screw hole is a dowel pin of sorts. So you just want to seat that in. Everything fell right in. I'm going to put that there. Grab your one screw with your locking washer. Tighten that down. Since it has that locking washer, it uh, makes me assume that it needs plenty of torque, so give it a really good snug down. And while I'm here, I am going to make sure this fill nipple is snug. All right. Okay, everything looks good, so wipe off my fingers because remember you don't want to grease that too much. I always push it all the way in, it will work itself out to where it likes to sit, but I always push it all the way in. All right, now just make sure you thread your trigger in there. Boom, look how easy that is. That is the one thing that I like much better about the FSC than the TA.1 is the way it goes together so easily it's wonderful so if you'll notice there's two different shapes of main body screws one of them has this v cut to it and you can see in the plastic upper that it fits in here and this one is more flat so that one fits in there Okay, remember that's the front one, so you don't want to snug it down too far, but you also don't want it too loose to fall out. This one, on the other hand, is also holding your regulator to the upper, so you want to crank down on this one a little bit more. Okay, now you got your two trigger screws, smaller Allen key. Okay, reverse, take the filler drop in. Tighten. Tighten, okay. Now you're going to want to install your bolt spring. Then when you stick your barrel in there, that's going to seat your pin. So uh, I don't know if you guys can hear this. There's a little click there. All right, boom. So there you go. I mean, you've just uh, opened and lubed your FSC. So you're going to have some grease in the upper, but it easily wipes off. And there you go. So. I'm going to go out to the garage and film another video of test firing, and I will upload that one soon as well. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. If you appreciate the content, give me a like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel, helps me bring you more content. Shout out to Grimberg, shout out to Hogue, uh, to Labco, First Strike, the, um, the customer service was amazing, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, Sterling Self-Defense, um, yeah, and drop me a like, comment if you have any questions, and subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care of yourselves.